What an honor it is to be with you tonight. In fact, this is a whole lot better than where I was last week. I was doing a motorcycle tour across Arizona with a bunch of ugly boys, and look where I'm at now. <laughs> In the presence of a lot of beautiful, beautiful women of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I just want to say how thrilled we are with how God is using our daughter, Terry. It's such a, a joy and a blessing to see what God is doing in her life and ministry. And uh, we're, we're very thrilled with the vision that she has and how that she's helping a lot of people all over the world, and especially a lot of women. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. This is where I begin to learn about the favor of God. Look at verse 12. <clears throat> now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Notice he says, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. Now, back in 1965, a new translation of the Bible was introduced to the world. It was called the Amplified Bible. I didn't find out about it until 1969. And one day, a friend of mine said, uh, I had made the comment to him, I'm having trouble understanding the King James. Uh, some of the terms in the King James, I, I don't know how to interpret. He said, oh, you need an amplified Bible. I said, where do you get them? He said, well, any Christian bookstore ought to have them. So I went to a Christian bookstore and found the amplified Bible. And I opened it immediately to this chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, and I wanted to see how it read. Now, listen to this. The Amplified Bible says, we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might realize, comprehend, and appreciate. Everybody say these words. Realize, comprehend, and appreciate. Now, before I read any further, let me, let me define those three words. They're important. To realize means to become fully aware and to fully understand. In other words, God wants us to fully understand and be fully aware of these things that he has freely given to us. Then the word comprehend means to grasp or to take hold of. In other words, the Holy Spirit has been sent to help us not only fully understand, but to grasp and to take hold of the things that are freely given to us. And then the word appreciate, you know what that means. It simply means to be grateful for, to hold dear, to prize, and to value. So notice these three words. The Holy Spirit has been sent by God to help us realize, comprehend, and to appreciate. And what is it that he wants us to realize, comprehend, and appreciate? The Amplified Bible goes on to say, to realize, to comprehend, and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. Notice, he wants us to get a revelation Amen. More than head knowledge, heart knowledge. He wants us to get a revelation of how that he has freely bestowed upon us his blessing and his favor. And folks, when you understand the power of the blessing and the power of God's favor on your life, that is a winning combination and you, your days of failure and defeat will be over. Amen. So I want to challenge you tonight. Realize, comprehend, and appreciate the gifts 
of divine favor and blessing that God has freely bestowed upon you. You say, but do I qualify? If you're born again, you do. Anybody in here born again? Then you qualify. Look at your neighbor and say, I qualify. And then tell them, go ahead and touch me. It'll be all right. (laughs) Amen. You qualify. If Jesus is the Lord of your life, you're in. You have been given the blessing of God and the favor of God. And notice, it is a free gift. You can't earn it. You can't get so good that God says, okay, now I'm going to give you my favor. No, it's, it's not earned. It's a gift. Amen. It's a gift. In fact, recently, I was blessed with a, with a, with a gift. And, uh, oh, it was a fine gift. Oh, yes, it was a fine gift. I, I've, I've collected classic Corvettes all of my life. I have a museum full of classic Corvettes. And just recently, I was given as a gift another one. Hallelujah. I didn't earn it. I didn't have to pay for it. It was a gift. Amen. And I didn't say, I'm so unworthy. I don't deserve this. I said, bring it here just as quickly as you possibly can. Amen. Lift both hands and say, Lord, I receive the gift of divine favor and blessing on my life. I didn't earn it, but you gave it, and I'm grateful for it. And give him your best shout, hallelujah. Amen. Now, one of the meanings of the word bestow is to confer, to confer. And um, God has conferred upon us certain titles. How many of you have ever watched a coronation of the queen where she confers a title? I'm talking about over in England. I have offices in the UK and I go to uh, Europe and and England and those nations quite often. And I, I haven't been to the palace to watch this happen, but I've watched it on television many times where she confers a title on someone. For instance... Paul McCartney, the former Beatle, he has been uh, given a title. In fact, the, the procedure is he comes and he kneels down in front of the queen and she takes the scepter and she lays it on his left, sh- left shoulder. Then she lays it on his right shoulder and then she confers a title upon him. So now Paul McCartney is no longer just Paul McCartney. He is Sir Paul McCartney. How many of you have ever heard of Sean Connery? The real 007. All those others are wannabes. He's the real 007. Okay. So Sean Connery had the same procedure. He came up in front of the queen, kneeled down before her. She laid the scepter on his left shoulder, on his right shoulder. And today he's no longer Sean Connery. He is Sir Sean Connery. Amen. How many of you noticed that Kate Middleton's life drastically changed when she married William and she was given a title that was conferred on her, Duchess. Her life changed drastically. I have good news for you. The moment you made Jesus the Lord of your life and you you bowed your knee in the presence of God, God took the scepter of righteousness and he laid it on your left shoulder and he laid it on your right shoulder and then he gave you a title and your title now is the blessed of God and the highly favored of God. Hallelujah. You ought to give him praise and thank him for it. Amen. And in fact, did you ever notice how the queen waves to the crowd? She doesn't do like this. You know, like granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. No, she's very dignified. In fact, when you walk out here tonight and somebody asks you, where have you been? To icing, thank you. (laughs) How are you doing? Wonderful, thank you. Blessed and highly favored. In fact, one time a pastor picked me up at the airport. I was preaching in his church that night and he rented a Rolls Royce to pick me up in. 
I had never been in a Rolls Royce. I'd seen Rolls Royce, and I'd never been in one. And they put me in the back. And the guy driving had a chauffeur's cap on, you know, and, man, I'm sitting in the back of this fine Rolls Royce. And every time we'd pull up to an intersection, I could see eyes focused on me. They're wondering, who is this in that Rolls Royce? It must be a politician. It must be some wealthy businessman. It must be a celebrity. And finally, I couldn't stand it anymore, and I just went. <laughs> and then the next flight we pulled up to, I rolled the window down, and I said, pass the gray poupon, please. <laughs> Do it one more time. Amen. See, so you're royalty. You have the blessing of God, and you have the favor of God on your life. Hold your head up high, praise God, and dare the devil to do whatever it is he wants to do and just tell him, uh, beg your pardon, you don't know who you're messing with. You don't know who you're fooling with. I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you. Can you say amen? It belongs to you just as much as it belongs to me. The only difference in me and some of you in this audience tonight is I have become highly developed in it. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I challenge you to get that Amplified Bible out again and look up all the scriptures you can find that talks about favor. You say, well, how many are there? Well, here's the good news. When you go to the Amplified Bible, it translates grace also as unmerited favor. And there are a lot of scriptures, particularly in the New Testament, on grace. And most of the time, when you see the word grace in the Amplified Bible, in parentheses, it will say unmerited favor. Now, here's what I do. Every time I read a scripture that's got grace in it, I say, that's me he's talking about. I have the grace of God on my life. I have unmerited favor with God. You see, the more you do that, the more you'll become favor-minded. Favor-minded. Everybody say that. Favor-minded. What do I mean by that? Uh, to be favor-minded is to be conscious and aware all the time. It's on your mind all the time. You get up expecting it to manifest all the time. Amen. In fact, you don't talk like the rest of the world. When they're saying it's all over, there's no way out. No, you, you begin to think, but I have favor. I have favor with God. God will open doors today that no man can shut. God will, will change rules and regulations and policies if necessary to get me through a door because I have the favor of God. Amen. Folks, I'm telling you, you can learn to walk in it and expect it to manifest every day of your life. I am, uh, I'm the proof of it because it happens all the time. I've got so many favor stories, it would take months to relate them all if I was to do so tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'll go to bed tonight, and the last thing I'll say before I close my eyes, thank you, Lord, for the favor of God. First thing I say when I get up in the morning, thank you, Lord, for the favor of God. I am favor-minded. I'm watching it. I'm, I'm watching for it. I'm expecting it all the time. You know, I remember one time I was, uh, I was in Africa, South Africa, and I had to come home earlier than I had anticipated. So there were still several days before uh, my flight was to fly out of South Africa, back to London, then from London on into Dallas-Fort Worth. But I needed to get back early. So my director there in South Africa, my international director, he took me to the airport in Joburg. And uh, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a ticket for an earlier flight. In the natural, you know, uh, there, there's no way for me to get on this, this flight or a flight that was possibly leaving for London. But we went anyway. And he said, uh, Brother Jerry, do you have a... a a reservation? I said, no, not until a few days down the road. He said, well, how do you know you're going to get on this flight? I said, favor. 
He said, I knew that was coming. That's what I expected you to say. And so we went to the airport. And uh, let me back up a little bit and tell you this. I had preached in a Zulu village. And the chief received Christ, was born again while I was there. He took me into his hut. And he gave me an ancestral sword that had been passed down from one generation. I mean, an ancestral spear that had been passed down from one generation to another. And he had it in his hut. And he wanted me to have it. He said, I'm giving you this. Take it back home to America. And so it was very precious to me. And I didn't want it, you know, to go underneath in the cargo because it was so priceless. I wanted, to, I wanted to set it next to me on the flight. And they're not going to let me carry a spear on board with me, you know. But I have favor. Everybody say, Jerry has favor. <laughs> and so when I got to the airport, I've got that spear in my hand. And uh, I said, I need to get on your next flight to London. She said, uh, uh, do you have a reservation? I said, no. I'm standing there with a spear. <laughs> now, this is way before 9-11, okay? You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't get a spear in the airport now, but you could back then. I'm standing there with this spear. She said, do you have a reservation? I said, no, I don't. She said, uh, well, it's not likely we can get you on a flight this late date to London and then on in to Dallas-Fort Worth. I said, well, uh, I have the favor of God, and I'm believing that something is going to happen that will open up a seat for me. She said, well, sir, that's just not likely. Now, my director is standing here on my side, and he's just grinning because he knows I'm believing for favor. And so about that time, there was a lady came out of a, a back door and behind the, uh, the stand where the people check in. She came out, and she recognized me. She said, hey, Brother Jerry, it's so good to see you. I love you're preaching. I got all your books. I listened to your messages. She was her supervisor. And she said, uh, is there anything I can do to help you? I said, well, I've had to arrange to fly in to the U.S. early. And my flight's not out until another three or four days. But I came here anyway, believing for favor to get on a flight that's leaving right away. She said, you know, I expected you to say that. She said, wait just a minute, I'll be back. She went in the back room there, and she came out, and she said, would the front row in first class be all right with you? I said, is the Pope Catholic? Yes, it would be all right with me. She said, well, somebody just canceled, and they had the front row in first class, and I'll give you that seat. And the lady that was working with me originally said, I don't believe this. I said, you don't have to believe it. I believe it. Hallelujah. And my director said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were going to have favor. I expect favor everywhere I go because I'm favor-minded. I said, I'm favor-minded. Hold your hand up over your head like this and look at your neighbor and say, I'm favor-minded. I said, I think about it all the time. I expect it all the time. I'm watching for it all the time. And if you really are, give the Lord a good shout. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's just one story. I, I could tell you thousands of stories about the favor of God. Finish the spear. Oh, yes. My wife said, finish, finish the spear. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm standing there with the spear. And she said, uh, but Brother Jerry, you can't, put, you can't carry that spear on board. I said, this is an ancestral spear. I can't, I can't put it in the cargo. It might get damaged. It might get broken. She said, well, I'm sorry. You can't carry that on board. And about that time, somebody tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around, and it was a captain for South African Airlines. He said, what flight are you on? I said, I'm going to London. He said, that's the flight I'm flying. Give me your spear. I'll put it in the cockpit. <laughs> My spear... I got to fly, fly first class, but the spear was up ahead of me. <laughs> and he said, now, where are you going when you get to London? I said, Dallas, Fort Worth. He said, what flight? And I told him. He said, 
My best friend is captain on that flight. I'll tell him, put it up in the, in the uh, front with him. My spear flew all the way from South Africa to Dallas-Fort Worth in a better place than I was in. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I have it in my office in my library today. That's the favor of God. Look at your neighbor and say, that is the favor of God. You say, well, that was just a coincidence. Well, if it was a coincidence, things like this happen to me all the time. And I don't think it's a coincidence. Can you say amen? All right, now let's go on. God has conferred upon you the title of the blessed one and the favored one. So therefore, we have every right to expect his blessings and his favor to show up in our lives continually. Now, I want to challenge you, take hold of this revelation and refuse to let go of it. Declare with me right now, I'm the blessed and I'm the highly favored. Say it again, I'm the blessed and I'm the highly favored. Amen. Now, Psalm 3, verse 8 says this, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. And right at the end of that verse is a little word, selah, which means stop and think about this. Stop and meditate on this. Notice it says, thy blessing, speaking of God, thy blessing is upon thy people. How many of you consider yourself being one of God's people? Look at, look at that hand that's raised. Make sure it's yours and not your neighbor's. You consider yourself as one of God's people? Then you're not going to get the blessing when you die and go to heaven. You've got it right now. It's on you right now. In fact, I like to say, I walked in here with the blessing on me just like I walked in here with this sport coat on. And I'm going to walk out of here with the blessing on me. Now, when I get home shortly, I'm going to take this coat off and hang it up. But I never take the blessing off. It goes with me everywhere I go. I never take favor off. It goes with me everywhere I go. Amen. Now, Psalm 5 and verse 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, and with favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. And the word compass implies to be surrounded or to be covered with favor. Amen. And I want you to understand and see here in this verse that the blessing and favor are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. The blessing and favor are inseparable. Remember what 1 Corinthians 2 said? The gifts of divine favor and blessing. I like to refer to 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and blessing and favor as God's stimulus package. What does stimulus mean? It means something that inspires hope. I get up every morning with hope that the, that the, the, the favor of God and the blessing of God is going to show up in some way. Amen. So the favor and the blessing are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. If you go back to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, when God first introduced himself <clears throat> to a man by the name of Abram, later called his name Abraham, the first thing he said to him, I will bless you. I will bless you. If you look in the Amplified Bible, it adds this. I will bless you and give you an abundant increase of favor. So you can't separate blessing from favor. If you have the blessing of God on your life, then you also have the favor of God on your life. Can you say amen? And I want you to go to your hotel room tonight or go back home tomorrow and see that. <laughs> Think about it. Meditate it. Let it become a deep revelation in your heart. Can you say amen? Now say this with me. I am surrounded by the favor of God. Everywhere I go, the favor of God is looking for an opportunity to show up in my life. Now some of you may be thinking, why am I asking you to declare and to decree certain things about favor and blessing? Well, I'll answer that by giving you another scripture. Job chapter 22 and verse 28. And this scripture says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. 
Thou shalt decree, and you decree with your mouth. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the word established implies to become set, fixed, uh, ordained, and ratified. Another word or another definition for the word establish or another implication of thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established is if you say it enough and frequently, eventually it will become a common occurrence in your life. That's the reason I talk favor all the time. I don't just talk it when I'm asked to do it in a meeting like this. I talk it all the time. I decree it all the time. In fact, if you were around me, like some people here that are with me, people that work with me, every time the favor of God shows up in some way, large or even small, I don't care if it's being blessed with a new Corvette or getting a parking place at the mall so I don't have to walk a mile. I will say out loud, that's the favor of God. That's the favor of God. And the more you decree it, the more you expect it, and the more you expect it, the more it shows up. Because Jesus said, what things soever you desire when you pray, receive, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. So to establish means that if you say it enough and frequently, eventually it's going to become a common occurrence in your life. Amen. Can you say amen to that? That's why I decree it all the time, not just occasionally. I continually talk the favor of God. You can ask my wife. You can ask my daughter, Terry. They hear me talking about the favor of God all the time, not just when I'm in desperate need of it. I talk it all the time. That's the favor of God. I'm believing for the favor of God to manifest. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Learn to decree God's favor over every circumstance, over every challenge that you face, that you're believing that the favor of God is going to manifest. Now, the Amplified goes on to say in Job twenty-two twenty-eight. 28, let me read the King James again. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the Amplified adds this. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. The light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Now, if you don't ever talk it, then you can't expect it to shine upon your ways. You just got quiet in this place. If you don't ever talk it, if you never talk it, if you never decree it, then it's not likely that it's going to show up and shine on your ways. Amen. Learn to decree God's favor all the time. Amen. Are you still with me? A, uh, another scripture that I want to leave you tonight, and my time's about up, Proverbs 13, 20. This is another way that you become favor-minded. Proverbs 13, 20 says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. The Lord taught me years ago to refer to that scripture as the law of increase by association. If you associate with wise men, you will increase in wisdom. If you associate with people that uh, um, are uh, prospering, then it's highly probable that you will begin to prosper. If you associate with people that are highly anointed by God, then it's quite possible that the anointing will increase on your life. I've, I had the privilege of, of serving on Oral Roberts' board for many years. I had the privilege of preaching with Kenneth Hagin many times. I've had the preach, uh, privilege of, of preaching with Kenneth Copeland for over 50 years. I not only know these men, I, don't only, I not only know of these men, I know them. I associate with them. And of course, Brother Roberts, Brother Hagin are in heaven, but I had the opportunity to associate with them. And what was on their life came on my life. Amen. When you associate with people that have something on their lives that you desire, if you stay connected, then eventually 
it will get on you. Brother Kenneth Hagin used to call it imbibing a person's spirit. Amen. You can imbibe a person's spirit. In fact, I remember when I first started preaching uh, several churches that I went to in those early days. They said, you sound like Kenneth Hagin. I said, well, could it be? It's because I listen to his messages day and night. Another place said, you sound like Kenneth Copeland. I said, well, could it be because I listen to the messages day and night? You say, well, I don't have an opportunity to associate with people like that. To associate doesn't just mean go have dinner with them, follow them around, uh, be in their presence all the time. You can associate with men who have wisdom, men who have the anointing, men and women who, who uh, uh, are wise. You can do that by listening to what they say, investing in the resources they have. You know, back when Don, uh, Ronald Reagan was president, I, I, I loved Ronald Reagan. And I was privileged to serve on the senatorial committee during Ronald Reagan's two terms. And I got to go to Washington quite often and be in special meetings. Some of the meetings, it was in honor of Mr. Reagan, President Reagan. And, and many times uh, I was in the room with him and I'd be as close to him as my wife is on the front row. I never met him, but I'd, I'd call my wife when I'd get back to my hotel and I'd say, I have been in the presence of a great man tonight. I said, Carolyn, when he walks in the room, there's a hush that comes over the audience. He just, he, there's something on him and it just, it just fills the room. Now, I never got to meet him, but I got books by him. I got books of his speeches. To this day, my daughters, they know how much I enjoyed him and and, and, and uh, uh, reading his material. And to this day, if they go to a bookstore and they say something that's Ronald Reagan, that's their gift to me. And they know how much I enjoy that. Now, I never met him. But something that's on him got on me. <laughs> Amen. You may never meet me, but I got resources. In fact, I say this just as humbly, without being egotistical. There's not another person in our generation who's written more books, who's produced more resources, preached more sermons on the subject of favor than Jerry Savelle. I've got the resources. Amen. And I didn't learn it from another man. I learned it by revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And my assignment is to teach you how to walk in it. Hallelujah. And you have the privilege of experiencing it just like I do. So let me encourage you, don't just walk out here tonight and say, wasn't that a good little speech that little fella gave us? No. <laughs> no, say, I'm taking hold of that. I'm taking hold of that and I'm going to run with it, praise God. As soon as I get home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to become favor-minded, and I'm going to begin to expect it everywhere I go, just like he does. God is no respecter of persons, and he'll do it for you if you're diligent, just like he's done it for me. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. Now, let me wrap it up with this. I know my time is about gone. Years ago, back there in those early days, as I was learning about how to walk in the favor of God, and I'm, I'm searching the scriptures, finding everything I can find on how to walk in it, how to expect it. And one day the Lord gave me 10 major benefits of walking in divine favor. And I want to give them to you. And uh, you may not be able to write them down as fast as I say them. You may not be able to write all the scriptures down as fast as I give them to you. But the resources to it is back there somewhere on the table. Uh, let me just give you 10 major benefits that the Bible talks about when you learn to walk in the favor of God. Number one, and Terry mentioned some of them earlier. 
the favor of God will produce supernatural increase and promotion. And you find that in Genesis chapter 39, verse 21. I'm just giving you one scripture reference, but there are many. The favor of God produces supernatural increase and promotion. Number two, the favor of God will bring restoration of everything the enemy has stolen from you. And it's found in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Number three, the favor of God gives you honor in the midst of your adversaries. That's found in Exodus chapter 11 and verse 3. Honor in the midst of your adversaries. Number four, the favor of God will cause you to increase in assets, especially in the area of real estate. And that's found in Deuteronomy 33, 23. Especially in in the area of real estate. And then number five, the favor of God will cause you to experience the greatest victories you have ever experienced, especially in the midst of impossible odds. The greatest victories you've ever experienced, especially in the midst of the most impossible odds. And then number six, the favor of God will cause you to experience recognition even when you seem to be the least likely to receive it. Amen. I get testimonies from that all the time where people say, I was believing for the favor of God and uh, uh, I lost my job and, and God opened the door for me to have a better job and it's a job where I had no training, no expertise and I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life. That's the favor of God. Can you say Amen. Number seven, the favor of God will produce prominence and preferential treatment. That's found in Esther chapter 2, verse 17. Prominence and preferential treatment. I remember one time I was on a flight from Los Angeles back to DFW. And I sat down next to a man. He was by the window, I was by the aisle. And the flight attendant came by. And she stopped and she said, I know who you are. I have one of your books with me. And when I get through serving everybody, I want you to autograph my book. I said, I'd be happy to. So she got through and she come down and knelt down in the aisle and brought two more flight attendants with her. They knelt down in the aisle between the two seats. And they were talking to me about the favor of God. And she wanted me to autograph her book. And then the captain came out to go to the restroom, the toilet. And he, he saw me and he said, hey, Brother Jerry, uh, I'll be with you in just a minute. When he came out of the restroom, he knelt down in front of all the flight attenders. And we talked about the favor of God. And then they got up and they said, we got to get back to work. And the guy next to me, he said, I don't know who you are, but I haven't had any service since you sat down here. <laughs> who are you? I said, highly favored. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's preferential treatment. The favor of God will do that. Number eight, the favor of God will cause petitions to be granted to you by ungodly civil authorities. Amen. Petitions granted by ungodly civil authorities. That's found in Esther chapter 5 and verse 8. And then number nine, the favor of God will change policies rules, regulations, even laws if necessary for your benefit. And that's found in Esther chapter 8 and verse 5. And then the favor of God will cause battles to be won on your behalf that you don't even have to fight for. Hallelujah. And that's found in Psalm 44 verse 3. And I want to close it out by reading that verse. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance did it because you were favorable toward them and did delight in them. So notice they didn't have to lift a finger because God favored them he fought their battle for them and he got them land 
that they didn't even have to fight for. Can you say amen? Yeah. Folks, I challenge you tonight once again. Spend quality time in the Word of God and learn about the stimulus package that God has provided for you. It comes in the form of his blessing and his favor. I love closing. I want to do it one more time. Several years ago, I was in Missouri on a motorcycle tour. I had about 60 bikers following me across Missouri and Oklahoma and then back to Texas. I had just finished a service in Pastor Keith Moore's church in Branson, Missouri. I'm driving, I'm riding to Tulsa to preach in a church. I had preached about the favor of God in Pastor Keith's church the night before. We're riding along there, and uh, I've got all these bikers behind me, and I'm just enjoying fellowship with the Lord, and I'm thinking about the favor of God. And the Spirit of God asked me a question. Now, we're doing about 70 miles an hour, you know, and I had the Spirit of God ask me a question, and he said this. He said, what is my blessing for? What is my blessing on your life for? I said, it is an empowerment to prosper. It is an empowerment to increase, to multiply, to excel. He said, okay, if that's what my blessing is for, what is my favor for? Well, I, I never really had thought of it in those terms. And before I could answer, he said this, if the blessing is the empowerment to prosper and to increase, then favor creates the opportunities to make it happen. Hallelujah. And you know what? You have both of them on your life. You have the blessing and you have favor. You have the power to prosper and favor is going to open the doors to give you the opportunities to make it happen. And you ought to thank God right now. Amen. Praise God.